go. Nice to see you. You too. What's going on? What's new? Oh, geez. I don't know. I'm happy to be here, though. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here. Yeah, finally. Well, you've been busy. You've been, yeah, you've been putting out we've been trying albums. to do this for several years. Hi. There's a, there's a ukulele in the audience. Bring it up. I used to play ukulele. Oh, I know. We're gonna, oh, here. Keyword used to. Thank you very much. Was I supposed to spot that that early in this? <laughs> used to play ukulele, but not now. See what I mean? Sorry, Mrs. West. <laughs> <laughs> that was your music teacher? Yes. How about it? Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time. Yes, you know, yes. Just the idea of getting back into the rhythm, putting on an, ang an English yeah. language album. Mm -hmm. Years and years. Is it a conscious yeah. decision that, to take a break? Um, yeah, I mean, I take my time with things, and uh, geez, I don't know, I just need time to, to kind of relax and live, and I write my songs, so it just, I don't know, sometimes I just, I, my songs have always been my way of kind of understanding myself. Since I was a small child, I kind of write it down and then go, oh, that's what I'm going through. Right. How important is, is that process then, to, to learn that stuff about you? Well, who likes learning about themselves, really? When... <laughs> Well, it really depends on what you're learning. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's fun on one level, but then it's kind of intense on another. So I guess songs are the perfect outlet for all that discovery. Sometimes I leave the studio with a demo, like I'll just take a CD and I'll pop it in, and that alone, even if that song never makes it anywhere, right. it, it helps you out because you're like, oh, you get to listen to it. and It's a perfect manifestation of melancholy because you've got the song, you've got the melodies, the chords, your lyrics. It's like... It's a living, breathing diary. So it's, it's uh, I guess it sounds kind of selfish. Like I make these songs for myself and then, and then put them out. But, but essentially, I like the connection part, you know? Right. I like the idea that, hey, I wrote it and it was mine, but it's not anymore because you've heard it. Right. Or you've heard it, you know? And, and not only have they heard it, but they now have their own personal experience with it. Exactly. So it reflects yeah. something in their own life. Yeah. When I first got wind of you, you were driving across the continent you and a guitar and you were playing and you, you, were, you were earning this the hard way yeah. before that whirlwind, that explosion mm. happened. Yeah. When you were in the middle, I mean, 12 million plus records on one album, but over 20 combined, when, you, when it hit and you got a set sense that, oh my God, my wildest dreams or whatever are coming true, what was that like for you in that, in, that, in that maelstrom? I think I've, you know, in the beginning of my career, I signed a record deal and I, although I was only about 20 years old, when I signed, I just turned 20. I put a clause in the record deal that said that if I wanted to go off and make my own Portuguese albums or Spanish language albums, I could do that on my own or with whatever label I wanted. So from an early age, I realized that there's a life beyond pop music. You know, there's, there's jazz music, there's country, there's folk, there's, you know, world music, there's Latin music. And I always listen to all that music. Like the world we live in now with everybody being able to listen to everything has always been my world. That's right. the world I grew up in musically. So, um, so I'm just kind of, I'm up for anything. And, and, and whether it means I sell bucket loads or droplets, it's kind of about me growing and about learning something new. We've well, been doing it for a long time. You also have this, uh, you're at the leading edge of fashion, the cutting edge, back in her Portuguese album days, her early... I thought you were about to show a horde picture. Very early. <laughs> Look at this lovely oh. girl. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you, you were getting oh. your grandma on early <laughs> in that shot. I was at Folk Fest in Victoria, BC, and I am singing with my ukulele that I haven't played um, lately. But anyway, um, I used to listen to these Portuguese folk songs. My parents are immigrants from Portugal, and they listen to these great, like, sort of pop, sort of immigrant sort of songs about their homeland. And I sang a song called, um, it was either Olá Portugal, hello Portugal, or it was Adeus São Miguel, goodbye São Miguel. Nice. <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> And I listened to it on my tape recorder, and then I'd sort of transpose it on my ukulele, and I'd perform them at, at Folk Fest. You certainly got a, a handle on how to be Southern American and Central American as well. This impersonation is <laughs> oh, no. a lot of joy. What's what next? You? I do an OK Shakira impression. Oh, gross. Oh, come on. You have to do that. You have to. What should I do? I haven't done it at all. Underneath your clothes, there's an endless story. There's the man I chose. There's my tear <laughs> That's what I mean. I need <laughs> That's amazing.
Have you done that for her? No. No. I need someone to censor me just in life. But anyway. No. <laughs> No, it's good. Actually, it's, it's because of the stuff that you do that you got. This is the, the clip I really want to play here. This is a beautiful song, which has meaning beyond just a song. Watch this. Tell me about your connection to that school. <clears throat> Where's the Kleenex? Um, so um, anyway, so it's interesting because you're playing that clip and um, just my new album, The Spirit Indestructible, because Rooney was the first place that um, that I sang Spirit Indestructible at, just for them, a cappella. I just said, this song is you guys. You know, this is you. This is your, just something about this reminds me of you. And, um, you know, well, and I think more than anything, my trips there and meeting these people just kind of, really uh, just inspired me about, uh, you know, life again, really. You donated a big chunk of money because you got caught up in that controversy over the Gaddafi thing. What did you learn from that experience? <sighs> I learned a lot of things. I think when it was happening, I kind of deep down knew that it would be something that would affect my life in the future. Um, I really believe in fate, and I believe in destiny, and I believe we make choices um, for reasons. And uh, I'm, it, it, it's like a snowball effect, I guess you can say. One thing leads to another, and um, geez, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, no, but that's it. Right there. <laughs> it's this idea of recognizing that something yeah. else can take over. The yeah. idea of, of giving back is important, and you obviously do it. What I, thought, what I find really interesting with artists who have been around for length, any length of time is when they start to look back at their other songs, you, and they change them. Do you change the lyrics on some of your songs when you sing them live now? I know the Beastie Boys. Yeah, I do. The Beastie Boys wouldn't <laughs> sing. Sometimes. Yeah, they wouldn't sing lyrics from their early albums. Yeah, so and it's funny because I was just reading uh, something about how um, Salt and Peppa at one point too, like half the band didn't want to sing "Push It" because they thought it was too graphic. Oh, you but know? it's such a good song. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good thing. Yeah, and I like that too. And yeah. I listened to "Push It," and yeah. I remember "Let's Talk About Sex" coming on the radio, and you know. Yeah. The radio being turned down. <laughs> and then, you know, I came out with uh, Promiscuous on the Loose album. And at the time, I don't know, I wasn't really thinking about it in that way. And, it, and I was in Miami and I was recording my album. And it was sort of a revolution of sorts for me, different levels. And uh, I put out the album. And then now, I actually am not totally comfortable with the song. And I actually change it to Mysterious. But nobody really notices because <laughs> the syllables are the same. Right. So, yeah, like, again, it's that, like, I don't know, just things change and... Is that a mom thing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the main difference when you become a mom is you don't write songs like trapped in your bedroom alone with your guitar for 24 hours <laughs> without sleep. Big hoops is a I like back. the challenge of that, though. I like the challenge of having to morph into different roles. I think that's fun, because I've always been kind of like a chameleon, so I like wore red on the red couch. Right, smart, <laughs> smart. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to see what you wear when I put on a camo couch. A oh, camouflage couch. That'd be cool. You know? It's a real pleasure to see you. Congratulations on the record. Thank you so much. Thank you.